Welcome to Capitol Hill. I'm Lyndall Curtis. Well, it's been a busy week in federal politics. The Prime Minister started the week in Perth for the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting and has ended the week in France for the G20 meeting. The mining tax has been introduced into Parliament, although its passage is not guaranteed. The carbon tax will go through the Parliament next Tuesday. And the government managed to get the planes back in the air for, during the Qantas dispute, although it's still having ramifications. Joining me to discuss the week's events are front benches from the Labor Party, Richard Miles, and from the Coalition, Michael Keenan. Welcome to you both. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Richard Miles, has this been a good week for the government? I think it's been a good week for the government. I mean, we saw a very changed attitude towards industrial relations compared to the former government in that we had a, a significant dispute affecting the whole country. Uh, we acted straight away in relation to that, a fair work hearing within five hours of the announcement that the Qantas fleet would be grounded and the fleet was back in the air 48 hours later. Now, you compare that to the period of the Howard government when you had a maritime dispute which went for months and our wharves were shut. Uh, that was a stark contrast. And, of course, uh, in the Parliament itself, we've seen uh, the beginning of the debate around the MRRT, and that's a, a real boost for uh, superannuees throughout uh, Australia, as it is for small business. Michael, the Coalition will see next week the carbon tax going through the Parliament, but the mining tax isn't certain for, for the government, is it? Uh, well, no, and it shouldn't go through because it's a very bad tax uh, in the idea behind it, but it's also been implemented terribly. Um, the Labor Party sat down and did a deal with the three biggest resource companies in Australia, and those resource companies completely ran rings around Wayne Swan uh, and his officials. And so what happened is they managed to push all of that tax liability uh, onto junior and mid-tier miners, particularly in my home state of Western Australia, um, which, of course, is going to be a terrible thing for the mining industry in the whole of the country. It's actually going to drive a dagger through the heart of the those small mining companies in Western Australia. Uh, it's a terrible idea to um, just uh, look for one particular industry which is making a good profit at the moment and say we're going to tax it uh, in, a, in a different way than other companies around Australia. But the way the government's gone about it is just diabolically bad and in line with the incompetence they always show on these issues. One issue which crosses both of your portfolios is that of asylum seekers. We've seen more boats arrive. We've also seen the tragedy of, of Java where at least eight lives have been lost. Both your sides of politics agree with the question of offshore processing. Do you think there's a very good reason for the Australian public to say, why can't you both just sit down and figure it out? Well, uh, I think what we want to see uh, is, a, is a stop to the boats coming, and that means we actually have to have a robust policy in place to provide a disincentive to boats coming, and that's what the Malaysian arrangement represented. And in that sense, it is very different to Nauru, which simply wouldn't be the disincentive uh, that, that the Malaysian arrangement is. Now, that's, of course, the government's view. We understand the opposition have a different view in relation to that, but in order to impl implement either view, we actually need to return the law in this country to the position that everyone understood it to be before the High Court decision, and that's, of course, the proposition that we were seeking to put through the Parliament. So I think the government would love to see the Parliament act on this issue, uh, but we actually need to see the opposition come forward and say they're willing to engage in that process as well. Well, we need to understand why it is we're actually here. Um, the reason we've had 251 boats carrying 13,000 people arrive in Australia illegally is because the Labor Party abolished offshore processing when they came to government. Um, they broke the system of robust border protection that they had inherited when, uh, when the uh, Australian people changed government in 2007. Um, so they broke it, uh, and uh, now apparently they, they, they are the ones who are going to fix it, even though they've had every single policy position on this issue, apart from one that we know actually works. Well, uh, it, it is very important that the Parliament does address this issue uh, and all it will take is for the Labor Party to agree to one very minor amendment to the changes that they're proposing um, which will give them 150 countries in which they can process people offshore uh, just with one minor safeguard that those countries are signatories to the UN Convention on Refugees, something the Labor Party used to believe was terribly important um, but now they seem to have abandoned in their rush. Well, it's something that, that, that to, be, to be solution. fair... But, but, Nice line, but a bit cute. Uh, one minor amendment, of course, puts uh, a line through the government's stated policy on actually dealing with this issue. So there's no sense in which that represents a meaningful compromise. It, it, and we shouldn't say that the opposition have somehow got this newfound commitment to countries which are signatories of the Refugee Convention because, of course, it remains their policy to tow, backs, tow boats back to Indonesia, which is not a signatory. It, it does seem like we won't be able to solve this now. My hopes have been dashed, so we'll move on. <laughs> no. uh, unsurprisingly, not a week has gone by without mention of the Labor leadership. There was a story this morning in the News Limited paper, the Daily Telegraph, about it, and this was the response. 
And my view is that the inquiry we are having in, into the, the media, we should widen it to make sure that we've got a decent press in this country. The Murdoch press are an absolute disgrace. They are a threat to democracy in this country, and we should absolutely be having a look at them. They are absolutely outrageous. It is no secret around this building that Kevin Rudd is trying to make a comeback, and here we have Senator Cameron blaming the Murdoch press for it. I ask you, if that is what he actually believes, he is hugely deluded. Richard Miles, stories in newspapers, stories in the media will come and go, whatever the merits of them. Do you, do you need to go to the extent that Doug Cameron suggests of actually formally inquiring more deeply into the Murdoch press, or do you just brush off the story? Oh, well, I, I think the thing to say is that the story we saw on the first page of the Daily Telegraph this morning was, was silly, it was completely uh, baseless, um, and really, you know, in, in my view, is a kind of fish and chip wrapper story. Uh, you know, I'm not, Doug can explain his own comments. I don't think we're about to see uh, any new inquiry into, into the media, and in a, in a way we don't need an inquiry to understand the rubbish that was printed on the front page of the Daily Telegraph this morning. Michael Keenan, the Coalition in the past has had its own leadership woes and seen stories like this come and go. Do you have any sympathy for the Labor Party? Uh, well, no, I don't, because, I mean, these are problems all of their own making. And, look, there's something quite sinister, I think, about Doug Cameron coming out and saying um, when the media are reporting what everybody in this building knows, in fact, surely everybody in Australia knows, and that is Kevin Rudd is making another run for the leadership of the Labor Party. Uh, and when the media reports on that speculation from Labor sources, the response of the Labor Party is to, say that the, is to attack the media and say that the Parliament should use all the resources at its disposal to intimidate the media into not reporting these things that everybody everybody knows are happening. Um, I really think that was quite a sinister contribution from Doug Cameron and Labor Party members should quite frankly and Richard should as well come out and say that they don't believe that that's an appropriate response from the government uh, when they're rightly criticised in the media or when the media is just reporting on things that we all know are happening. Well I, I, as, I, as I think I said I don't think we're about to see any uh, inquiries widened in relation to, to the media uh, but frankly what we have seen is a whole lot of reporting which is based on media talking to media or talking to the opposition. I mean, when it comes to the, the question of leadership, Julia Gillard is doing a fabulous job in, in what are obviously difficult circumstances in terms of the challenges which are facing this country today, but she's meeting those challenges. The carbon price has now passed the House of Representatives. This is an important reform for the country. Uh, we've seen the minerals resource rent tax entered into the House of Representatives this week. Again, a really difficult issue dealing with the patchwork economy, but we're dealing with it. Uh, she's doing a fantastic job in that role, um, and, and her leadership is frankly not on the agenda within the Labor Court. Well, Mike, Michael, yeah. Sorry, you're, on, you're, uh, there's also talk about whether Tony Abbott should get on the front foot more, put out some positive policies. Your party room heard this week that most of the policy work has been done. Should, should those policies start seeing the light of day? Uh, well, we have done a lot of policy work and a lot of them are already out there. And we do have policy consistency between what we took to the Australian people last time and what we take this time. Because unlike the Labor Party, we actually believe in certain things uh, and those core beliefs don't constantly change. Well, not uh, the problem processing. we have with the Labor Party is that they have no idea what they believe in. There's no agenda coming from Julia Gillard and the Labor Party about where they want to take Australia. And of course, all they are is completely obsessed with who they're going to get to be their next leader. Uh, the Prime Minister can't do any serious governing because all she has to do is watch her back um, whilst the faceless men of the Labor Party decide whether they want Kevin Rudd or Stephen Smith to be the next leader. This, this morning, uh, the Leader of the House, Anthony Albanese, briefed the House on the arrangements for the visit by the US President, Barack Obama. Uh, he'll address the House on the 17th of November. Christopher Pine, the, the, his opposition counterpart, got up and gave a speech where he, he talked about uh, the Labor leadership changing before George Bush came out here. Was that an appropriate thing to bring up in the context of this visit? Uh, well, it was a few factual things and uh, um, which are beyond dispute and uh, I'm not sure why the Labor Party was so precious about it. Uh, the last time we had a US President uh, come and give the Australian Parliament the honour of addressing it um, was George Bush and at that time the Labor Party uh, got up and uh, the uh, then uh, manager of opposition business, Mark Latham, uh, moved amendments and said how outrageous it was and what a waste of taxpayers' money it was um, that the US President would come and address the Australian Parliament. Uh, and of course we know that uh, Mark Latham had also made some very anti-American remarks before that. So I thought it was uh, just a few factual comments from Christopher. I, I'm really not sure why Labor is so precious about it.
Oh, I'm, a, I'm utterly astounded uh, that Michael and the Liberal Party are now taking a leaf out of Mark Latham's book uh, when it comes to uh, the ways in which to deal with a presidential visit to this country. I mean, but I mean it just seriously, show that, that oppositions of all sides will play politics when they get the chance. Oh, well, what it shows is that they're working from the Mark Latham playbook when it comes to dealing with a visit from the United States well, President. Not and I absolutely for Mark to be Prime Minister of well, Australia. Well, and I'm not exactly sure why you're uh, why you, you're supporting the way in which he behaved then, uh, in the way in which Christopher Pines is behaving this, uh, today. I mean, the, the thing is this: our relationship with the United States is unquestionably the most important bilateral relationship that this country has. Uh, the alliance is a cornerstone of our foreign policy. And a visit by a United States president to this country is both a rare and significant thing and must be above politics. And I note that actually the shadow, uh, op the, the, the shadow foreign spokesperson, Julie Bishop, I think gave a very dignified speech in the parliament today. But what Christopher Pine did was utterly outrageous and it forms part of a, a tradition actually that we've got on the part of the Liberal Party now in criticising Barack Obama. We heard the former Prime Minister John Howard equate uh, a presidential win by uh, Barack Obama as being a win for terrorism. But that, that was the some current, time ago in uh, very yeah, different well, circumstances. But we've got the, the, the current leader of the opposition uh, saying that Barack, Barack Obama uh, sounds better than he really is. Um, you know, I, I think it's incumbent on the opposition to treat this visit with the absolute dignity that it deserves and the importance that it has for this country's foreign policy. Well, Mike, Michael, what do you think an address by a leader like a US president does, does mean? Uh, well, I think it's a great affirmation about the relationship that we have with the United States. And, of course, in the coalition parties, um, we don't uh, have any qualms about that relationship, where, of course, oh, in the Labor really. Party, what you'll find is that there'll be a whole diversity of views. We and found the, the Labor Party, of course, traditionally, uh, they have not supported the relationship as strongly as the coalition does. Um, it is our most important international relationship uh, on so many levels, and the idea that we wouldn't support a visit by the President of the United States is clearly ludicrous. Um, a few political jibes against the government uh, hardly represents the hysterical things that Richard was saying about it um, and quite frankly uh, I don't think that this is a serious debate. Um, the coalition uh, obviously supports our relationship with the United States and we're very pleased that President Obama is visiting to reaffirm the importance of that now, relationship. Now just finally and quickly we're racing towards the end of the parliamentary year. It's been very rancorous in Parliament. Any, any chance of a bit of goodwill and bonhomie as we go towards the Christmas season? Well, Richard and I will certainly be having a drink after this program <laughs> but I'm not sure that it will extend further than that because unfortunately we have the most incompetent government uh, in Australia that anyone can remember in living memory uh, and it's not good for this government to be continuing until 2013. They're making all the wrong decisions, they're completely internally focused and the best thing we can have in Australia is an election so that people can decide whether they think this experiment in minority government has worked or not and I think the resounding answer will be no. Well, I think what we've got on the part of the opposition is a policy-free zone. I mean, they say no to everything and in the process change their positions on absolutely anything 180 degrees. So climate change, offshore processing, you name it, they'll do whatever they can to say no to the government. And with that, I think the chance of Christmas card exchange is very, very limited, but thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Thanks Linda. And thank you for joining Capitol Hill. Please join us at the same time tomorrow.